Hello friends, this is Bungle. My latest Portal 2 video is about toggle switches. I have created three different types of toggle switches in the game. I have also um, created a three-way toggle switch at the end. And for those that don't know, a three-way three switch is a switch that you can turn it on and off from two different switch locations. Both switch locations are fully functional. This is the first one. I'm not going to spend much time on this because it's extremely obvious and simple. It's just a manual toggle switch. If you need a really cheap toggle switch and you can manually stand on a button, as far as I can tell, this is the cheapest way to go. I, maybe you can use force fields instead of lasers, but um, yeah, it's quick, it's cheap, and it's manual. I'm going to get right off this and go to the next one. The next one, as far as I can tell, is an original design. I stumbled onto it while I was uh, wasting my time. I put my name in the title because I <laughs> I'm an idiot. Okay, this one is not 100% reliable, and that's another reason to call it the bungle switch, because it's not 100% reliable. But for the first 14 pushes in a row, it does work. On push number 14, it will turn itself off and then back on again. And then as far as I can tell, it works again for the next 14 pushes. So it's a 90-something percent reliable toggle switch, and compared to the other designs out there, it's very, very cheap. Uh, that oscillating platform is the timer for the on-off. This is the, um, the output right there, I think. This piston right here serves as a pulse limiter for the pedestal switch. The pedestal switch has a three second minimum. That's no good. We got to get that down. So what happens is this pedestal turns on the laser beam and the piston at the same time. The piston rises up and cuts the laser off after about a second or so. And that's the pulse limiting effect. And I just kind of figured this out manually. I just figured out how to time this out so that it worked. And again, it's good enough. Um, the budget's pretty tight in this game. If you're building puzzles with machines like this in it, you don't want to waste a bunch of extra laser beams making a toggle switch. So, in my opinion, this is a really good switch. Most people are not going to push a switch more than 14 times in a row, so they'll never see that it's not perfect anyway. There you go. Moving on to the third and final one. This, this again, I kind of... Um, I, again, I think this is an original design as well. Um, you can tell I've been having fun with this. <laughs> this is what I do with my spare time. This particular switch is 100% reliable. This will never get out of sync. You can push it a thousand times in a row and it's going to work 100% of the time. Now this is actually my second take on this video. I tried to explain how this works completely and it just doesn't work. I get lost in the process as I try to explain it myself. For those that understand the basics, I will explain it. Um, the pulse limiter for the pedestal is the same thing on this one except it's timed a little bit differently. That's the, the one on the left side of the wall right now. That's the output and then this piston switch is the cutoff for the pulse limiter. So on my other design the pulse limiter laser was up on the second section right here. All that means is that this one is a quicker pulse limiter. It cuts off at about 0.3 seconds if I were to estimate. The back and forth mechanism is the same except there's an OR gate underneath this is similar to other people's designs right here. The, the OR gate underneath simply makes sure the platform doesn't stop oscillating when it's in between the two lasers. It can only stop moving when one of these two vertical lasers is cut off like it is now. Um, and that's the failsafe. That's what keeps it from getting out of sync. And I believe those are the key points worth mentioning right here. My design is quicker than the others that I've seen. The others require an oscillating platform to go three or four tracks long. With mine, I only have it two tracks long. Oh, that's what I wanted to mention. The, the trick that I found to that was in these vertical lasers to place them on the outside edge of the cube. Don't have them centered in the block, but push them to the outside edge. And that's what allowed me to time everything up so that the switch works perfectly. I'm pretty proud of this, to be honest. That's why I'm making a video. I couldn't get this to publish because the Steam Workshop <laughs> the Steam Workshop isn't working right now. But I've cycled this thing a thousand times. It syncs up perfectly. There is no chance now that I say that, somebody will find it. As far as I can tell, there is zero chance for error. If you find a flaw in this, put a comments, comment down there below. The next one is the exact same design, except it's a three-way switch, meaning I can turn it on or off from either of these two pedestal switch locations. The actual switch logic is exactly the same. The only difference is that I added an extra pedestal switch to the room, and then I added an OR gate between the two so that um, both pedestal switches send the same signal to this relay that relay acts as the output for the pedestal switches. 
Same exact switching mechanism. So the only difference here is the three-way effect. And you can go... Oh, also, if you... Um, you have to wait for the three-second timer to end up before you can use the switch again, but this is a foolproof system, so even if you do press it while it's going, it won't work the second time, but you're not going to be able to get the machine out of sync. The machine's going to continue to work every time. After I just push it out of sync, it still works the way it's supposed to. And that's about all I can think of to say. If you enjoy this, I hope you incorporate the switch into your maps because that way I will live on forever. Alright guys, bye bye